Batman issue 98 finds Scarecrow and Riddler playing a game of chess. Jonathan thinks that Edward is scared since he hasn't made his move, but the villain says that he's merely thinking. However, Scarecrow continues to goad Edward, culminating in him attacking Scarecrow. Oswald wonders if anyone had money down on how quickly Edward would flip out, but no one did. The villain goes to see Catwoman, who is busy watching the news on what's unfolding in the city. Penguin asks if she would like to partake in any of the various games he has going, but Selina's only focused on the news, knowing it's all her fault since she gave Joker access to all of Bruce Wayne's money. She wonders if there's been any sign of Batman, but Oswald knows there hasn't, and thinks the hero has been taken off the board permanently. Selina hopes that Bruce can hear the city calling to him, as in his mind, Bruce talks with Alfred, showing him his new invention, the Batarang. Alfred comments about how his utility belt will need to be bigger, but Bruce says the whole suit is going to be a utility belt, wanting to bring Lucius Fox in on the secret soon. Bruce knows that every compartment on the belt saves a life, and that's just the beginning. Alfred says that this is all just Bruce's brain reaching for memories he can find the right optimism in, as suddenly Bruce finds himself in the bat suit, not understanding what's happening. Alfred knows that he does know what's happening, as Bruce begins to remember Harley Quinn giving him some tea, and that Alfred isn't real since he died. Alfred confirms that he is dead, but Bruce isn't, and he's been given the gift of seeing the bigger picture here, and he has no idea how long it will take to get the Joker toxin out of his system. So in the meantime, Alfred tells Bruce that they will have some property. In the real world, Harley keeps Batman safe in the garden, wondering what he's seeing in his drugged up days. She tells the passed out hero that she needs him to come back soon, as a voice asks if she ever shuts up. Harley thinks that it's Pamela returning to the garden, but it's actually Punchline, who finds it sweet that Harley brought Batman there to lure Pamela out of hiding. But thanks to her flamethrower, she knows it's a bad idea to hide out in a jungle. Bruce Meemold joins Alfred for tea in the kitchen, telling him the exact type of tea the butler is pouring and how he would bring it to the man when he was dealing with the most disturbing cases. Bruce knows that Alfred didn't know he was taking notes, but he knew the tea was his way of telling him that he knew the man was afraid, and in a way it was him telling him that it was okay. He says that he tried making the same tea a month after Alfred passed, but it wasn't the same. Alfred wants to know how bad it is out there, learning the Joker is using his his money against Bruce and has taken Lucius Fox hostage, poisoning him and forcing him to turn his gadgets deadly. Bruce knows the Joker will kill thousands when he makes them watch the same movie his parents watched the night they died and Gotham's death was bought and paid for by the Wayne Foundation. Alfred knows that Bruce sees Joker living in a cold world where only he and Batman are the only real living beings, and he knows the Joker mocks Bruce's love and family and relationships, but if killing them offers him the chance to get ahead of Batman in their game, he would do it without hesitation, and he puts so many at risk because he knows Bruce can't save them all. All because he knows Batman is his opposite, and there's no difference to him taking one life or a million. However, there is a difference to Bruce. Harley meanwhile battles Punchline, who begins burning the garden around them. Harley grabs Bruce's body, moving him as Punchline says the toxin in his system will take days to clear out, and by then the city will be ash, so she can stop hiding behind the hero. Harley fires on the villain, saying instead she'll hide behind this big gun. Her bullets rip into the flamethrower, destroying it and leaving Punchline and Harley to face one another with only their baseball bats and knives. Harley says that she went soft on Punchline in their last battle, but this time she isn't going to be holding back. Punchline says Harley thinks that she is actually somebody since she's bought into her own hype knowing everything about Harleen Quinzel, telling the woman that she was too stupid to realize the Joker used her as a means to an end. Harley says that Punchline is the exact same as her, but the woman says that she thought she was going crazy with everyone around her just pretending the world isn't falling apart. But then she saw the Joker speak in an online video, and after a year, she finally found him, tracking him down and joining his cause to take down society. She kept on proving to him that she was serious until Joker finally finally noticed her, allowing her to be at his side when he kills Batman and they take the city. Harley says that she feels sorry for the girl, saying that while she thought Joker had a heart, Punchline seems to think he has a brain, but she knows he's doing this for other reasons, saying that he's a manipulator and he's manipulating Punchline. Punchline says that Harley just doesn't get it, as Harley punches her in the face, following it up with a kick which downs the villain. She begins laying into Punchline with heavy punches, saying that there is nothing in the world Joker cares more about than Batman. But again, Punchline says that she's wrong and she'll prove it.
it, escaping Harley's clutches so she can go and kill Batman. In his mind, Bruce is told by Alfred that he takes himself too seriously, since after all Batman is a child's dream, a dream that saw him travel the world and learn every way to save everyone. But Alfred knows that a part of Bruce believes he can do that and he needs to hold on to it. He knows however there is a weight to this promise he made, a weight that would crush any normal man and since Alfred died it has almost crushed him. Bruce apologizes but Alfred tells him not to since Bruce has been spending too much time trying to save Alfred's life since he won't accept he's actually dead and because of it he's pushed away the people that remind him of Alfred and he holds it against Damien for watching the murder happen, Dick for not being himself and being there to help him and Selina for making him feel it was safe not to come home as much. Bruce knows that he failed but Alfred slaps him, yelling at the man and telling him that his story isn't over since he's Batman and he needs to accept the world he lives in and accept what he can control and more importantly he just needs to accept that he didn't and cannot save Alfred or his parents. Alfred does say that he can save himself and in doing so save the lives of many people in the city since every life saved is a victory against death and against the Joker. Bruce knows that he can't do it alone and Alfred says he doesn't need to, telling him to find his family and love and use it to take back the city and be the impossible man who saves the families from the movie Joker has planned. Bruce does know that if he wakes up with his mind intact he won't hear Alfred ever again and he doesn't know what he'll do without the man but Alfred says that this is him doing it without him and he's the only voice in his mind telling him to steady himself and do what he needs to do since Bruce doesn't need him in his ear or at the back computer to know what he will say. Alfred tells his son to wake up and tell the city who he is so Batman awakens, shocking punchline who knows it's not possible for him to be awake now. Batman says that no one has a hold over him since after all he's Batman. Taking out the villain, Harley is glad to find that Bruce is back, confirming with him that he did indeed get his entire mind back. Reactivating his bat suit systems with his trusty battery, he calls in to the bat computer, telling it to call all of the bat family members. Catwoman meanwhile says that she's leaving Penguin's bunker but Oswald reminds her that that's impossible and she cannot just leave. Selina says that she is and they are all coming with her, telling the villains that if they come with her she can make them all billionaires. Batman issue 98 was an utterly brilliant installment to Joker War that saw round 2 of Harley's battle with Punchline as well as Bruce getting a really heartwarming moment with his surrogate father for what may be the last time. Man I loved Alfred's little speech here to Bruce, it's so well done in that it reminds Bruce and us the reader what Batman truly stands for and I love James Tynan bringing it back to what it originally was which is a child's dream of a world and what Bruce wanted for the world when he was left orphaned at a young age. That's just so cool and definitely one of the better reiterations of what the Batman is put to page. I'm really looking forward to the final two chapters of the Joker War along with the return of the Bat family next issue. Kind of feels like it's been a long time since we've seen all of the Bat family so I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10.